All right, guys, so far, every code exercise we have created goes away whenever we exit the Python interpreter. So it's time we graduate from the Python interpreter and start writing some Python scripts that we can save and rerun. But before we can go into that, we need to delve into the world of setting up and using an integrated development environment or an IDE, as we call it. Technically, while we don't need that to write Python code, but it's kind of like doing woodworking without some power tools, you know? So your IDE or your editor is sort of like your power tool. And in this lesson, we will learn what is an IDE as well as how to download, install, and set up PyCharm. For those of you who are joining me for the first time, my name is Nelson Lim, and I am both a VFX artist and technologist and I help other CG practitioners to create more, earn more, and live more, both on this YouTube channel as well as on my website, nelsonlib.com. In this video, we will start introducing you to an IDE as well as how to set it up. So what is an IDE? Well, an IDE is also known as an Integrated Development Environment and an IDE is basically a code editor that has sort of a powerful ecosystems of plugins that will allow you to basically code more quickly and easily. You can create Python scripts with just about any text editor really, even Notepad. But an editor with some bells and whistles for Python is going to make coding a breeze. I am a big fan of the Sublime text editor which is really easy to use, very powerful, and can edit a whole bunch of code as well as just plain text files. I'm also a big fan of the uh, PyCharm IDE, which is available specifically for Python. Personally, I use both. In this series, I will introduce you to PyCharm because it comes fully loaded and is easy to get going with sort of minimal setup. So let's walk you through the steps on how to download PyCharm. You can download the free community edition of PyCharm by searching for PyCharm download from Google. And it should be the first link that links to jetbrains.com. Go ahead, click on that. And it should bring you to a page that is sort of similar to this. Select the community edition, not the professional edition. The community edition is completely free and open source. And depending on the operating system that you're using, it should already by default have chosen one. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux as well. So you can use it in any operating system. Go ahead and click download, and that should begin to download your PyCharm IDE. After downloading PyCharm, we proceed to our downloads folder and we double click the PyCharm installer. That should eventually launch PyCharm. On Windows, you may be asked, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Hit yes and continue. And now you are presented with the setup. Hit next. Go ahead and choose the default installation directory. Hit next. I like some of the convenience of these options, so I will click add open folder as project and add launches door to the path. Click next and install. Once complete, you will be prompted either to reboot now or manually reboot later. Uh, choose whichever option you want, but just remember to reboot. If you have restarted your computer after installing PyCharm and launched PyCharm, you should come to a window like this. It says, welcome to PyCharm. Now I'm going to show you how to create a new project and run a simple file. So let's begin by clicking on new project. PyCharm operates on the premise of projects. So let's go ahead and define where we want to put this project. So we can go to browse and I like to put my project here under dev underscore sand, but you can really put it under any location that you want to hit enter. And then let's name it after in our case, Python for the anxious artists. It's going to create a new environment. Uh, we'll cover what virtual environments are in a little bit, but safe to say it's best practice to use virtual environments. If you have create a main.py welcome script checked on, just uncheck it and go ahead and click create. And it will take a second to create a virtual environment. 
if you're like me and you are on Windows, you might see this little Windows menu right now after the virtual environment is created. You can go ahead and either say exclude directories or don't show again. In my situation, I will decide to just go ahead and exclude. When I exclude, it will ask me if I want to configure this automatically or configure manually. I'll choose configure automatically and it will ask me do you want to allow this application to make changes to your device. Hit yes and that should go away. Now we've created a new project in the project folder called PYFTAA or Python for the Anxious Artist. This is sort of your project menu bar on the left side and typically over here is where you will see a whole bunch of code. So let's open up our and browse through our project folder. If I click under this, you see right now I have nothing. So I want to create another folder inside our Python for Anxious Artists folder. And all I do is right click that, hit new, select directory, and name that directory. I'm just going to name this directory SRC, and that's sort for source code. And this is a very standard practice where, you know, within a project folder, maybe all of my code, I'm actually going to put in a separate folder called source. So right under source now, I'm going to right click that, hit create, and I can create a new Python file. You go ahead and create a new Python file. It will ask me a name for the Python file. I'll just call it hello. So if I just hit hello, it will actually create a hello.py file and it will open it up. So I'm going to go ahead and print hello. And this will be our sort of one liner Python script that we'll create and we'll hit save. You can either do control S or just save. I've already saved this file. And now there are a few ways to run our Python script hello.py. One way to run it within PyCharm is to go ahead and right click the script and say run hello or control shift F10. It will generate a quick run over here where it says I'm running this and it will print the output which is hello and the process finished with this exit code. So that's how you run. Another way you can run this is via the terminal. So if you click on terminal, you're now in the Python for the anxious artist series. And if you're a little bit familiar with um, command line term, uh, commands, if you want to list what's inside, if you want to see what's inside a folder, you hit dir on Windows. And it says that I have another source SRC folder in there. If you want to navigate to that source folder, go ahead and use cd for change directory and do SRC, hit enter. And now it tells you that you are in the Python for the anxious artist slash source folder. If you want to know what's inside that source folder, hit dir again, and it will list everything that's inside that directory. In this case, we've already created our hello.py. We can run it simply by invoking our Python interpreter, Python, followed by hello.py, and it will now run our hello.py script and print hello. So I've shown you two ways that you can run this, run via the PyCharm run command or via the PyCharm terminal. And the terminal is pretty much the same as if you were to start a Windows command prompt as well, you will be able to run it similarly using Python space hello.py. Lastly, I want to show you the Python console. So just like how we have been invoking the Python console on our command prompt in all of our previous exercises, PyCharm comes with a Python console as well. If you go to the bottom, you would be able to see Python console. Click on it and that should show up a Python console window. And so this is very similar to the our Python interpreter. In fact, it's about the same thing. And so we can always do what we've been doing previously and even print hello in here. So this is really nifty and useful once again to have a Python console around while you're coding. So you can use this sort of as a sandbox to test ideas and to test out little things just to see if they evaluate as true or false and figure out things out. So really, really useful Python console to have around. So remember to hit subscribe and like this video if it has added value to you. All right, question of the day. Do you have a favorite IDE or editor that you use? Share it with us in the comments below. I'm sure we'll all love to hear that. And 
If you have a specific way that you configure your editor or your IDE that really helps you, definitely share those tips in the comments below and we'd love to hear from you. So that's it for this week. We'll see you in the next video.